Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Persistent entity streaming and deeper persistence is coming to Star Citizen with Alpha 3.18 in fact, but this is just a stepping stone towards a whole host of important features. I want to talk today about persistent hangars, habs, homesteads and bases that players will be able to build and customize in the future. It's going to be a mixture of what Cloud Imperium have previously talked about, a little bit of theorycraft and some personal expectations. And please feel free to get involved in the conversation in the comments below. Pairs or persistent entity streaming allows for the tracking and saving of item location and state and, and it can even restore that even if the server crashes. This is a major part of server meshing tech that's needed to have multiple servers come together to form a shard. So multiple servers make a single shard. At the moment, a shard and a server is the same sort of thing because they're not stitched together. But in the future, multiple servers will be part of a single shard. So this potentially allows for thousands of players in the same mega server. But there are a lot of things that are now much closer to becoming a reality for Star Citizen and its gameplay. And Persistent Hangers is one of them. Persistent Hangers had been seeing work and development recently. Cloud Imperium had worked on it up until uh, the end of August. More specifically, the feature description was work that grants players the ability to have their own persistent hangers. This will also bring changes to the cargo gameplay loop by allowing players to pack their grids manually. This was a feature that was originally going to be seen in 2022, but Cloud Imperium decided it needed some more work, and you can see by its description as well, it's very much tied in with the cargo refactor that's currently planned to come with Alpha 3.18 along with persistent entity streaming. So with that in mind, and Cloud Imperium doing a lot of work towards it already, it looks like persistent hangers could be coming really soon. But what would a first implementation actually look at? There is going to be a healthy amount of theory crafting here, and there's a couple of major ways I see them having a first implementation. So it could be very much similar to what we have with spaceports and public hangers already, to be honest. You'd get to an elevator at a spaceport, and then maybe you could have your own hangar there that you might be able to travel to. So you'd go to an elevator at the spaceport, you'd press the personal hangar button, so you'd have all the other buttons as well, but you'd have a personal hangar button, and then that would take you to your personal hangar. That physical location that the elevator takes you to isn't that important for the feature to work, and it's quite likely that it will uh, move you around. Uh, it doesn't need a physical address, it just needs to take you to a hangar that then the interior is your personal hanger. So persistent interior, probably not a persistent exterior. There's a few things that Clan Imperium could do with the shared exit or shared exits. I would expect it to have a different sort of um, entry exit area than the sort of, sort of more public hangers because I do expect there to be, well, you can land at these landing zones. There are public hangers that you can land at. Bam, there's costs associated with landing, loading, unloading, all that sort of jazz there. But also if you've got your own personal hanger, well, that's a different entrance. They don't have to do it that way. It could all just be handled in a very similar way to uh, the way we have hangers now, except for when you spawn your ship, you just have a customizable hanger there that you can change the interior of, you can store cargo at, you can display some of your ships at, but it won't be the ability to display all your ships or anything like that because that would require far too much space in a lot of situations. There might be different types of hanger that you can purchase. Um, obviously, a UI is incredibly important here because a lot of this stuff can be done just via a UI. You want to store all your commodity cargo. You want to store a huge amount of items. Well, you can probably purchase more space. You can drop all your sort of iron off. There's a lot of space in a lot of these cities as well. There's a lot of rooftops that potentially you would be able to use as personal hangers and personal habs. What I'm saying is, especially in the first implementation, you don't need truly physicalized addressed hangers to have all the gameplay of a persistent hanger. You just need the ability to have a solid UI that can store everything and some physicalization so that you can say, this is my hanger, look at it, and a way of other players being able to join you at that hanger. When you purchase things in the verse, you're going to be able to send them to your sort of like your hab, your hangar, to a particular ship, to a particular planet. There might be costs associated with sending things certain distances. You could argue as well at the moment that we sort of effectively have persistent hangers now because we can store items at a planet and then sort of come back to them, move those things into our ship and sort of leave all that sort of stuff. But really, we're talking about expanding out gameplay, some physicalization and customizations of interiors and storing cargo and shared spaces. I'd also expect there to be different sizes of persistent hangers because the exit 
of a hangar needs to accommodate your largest ship. Also, some locations aren't going to be able to house certain sized ships. You're probably not going to be able to house a Javelin or an Idris at Microtech. There's a lot of hand wave stuff that Cloud Imperium can do here as well. They can go, well, um, if you've got certain ships in your hangar or you're stored here, they're actually in underground storage in the sort of um, other section of the hangar that you can't see. It's off screen, but like come out of the floor when you spawn them. Space and performance is an issue with the way they do um, sort of physicalized hangars. There were plans for customization of your hangars with additional facilities, workbenches, storage, etc. But we don't actually know where this sort of gameplay is anymore. It was quite a long time ago that they had sort of these more custom modular hangars planned. I'd still like that to be the plan. I hope that's the plan still. But in a first implementation, it's really just going to be you customizing the area with some flair and putting like lockers down and all that sort of jazz. You can still expect to have a sort of public hangar system as well that allows you to uh, land and take off without any um, additional sort of form of special storage or customization. But I'm also expecting fees associated with the landing and takeoff at pretty much every area that we go. Personal hangars might work out cheaper over a long period of time, but there might not be the availability and there might be costs associated with them that make them more prohibitive if lots of players have um, sort of personal hangers in certain areas. Because there's got to be some restrictions, right? They can't just go, well, actually, all players can have their own customizable personal hanger and hab in this area. That would be madness. However, when you think about the amount of sort of land there's going to be in Star Citizen eventually, well, it becomes a lot easier for you to think, well, actually, players are going to be distributed over a huge area. Something else they expect to see with sort of hangers is that um, orgs will probably be able to share hangers out. Um, you'll be able to sort of uh, let people use your ships if you give them permissions. Same with friends. When they've got a proper permission system set up, you'll be able to go, bam, here's access to my hangar. Now, something we've kind of touched on, at least a bit, and something that's actually pretty similar to persistent hangers is custom and persistent habs and rentable habs. When we spawn in a landing zone, we're typically waking up in our bed in a hab. Eventually, you'll be able to rent and buy these in different cities. Um, I'm not sure exactly how the system's going to work. If it's just going to be rental, that would make the most sense. Uh, and this will be another place you can customize with flair and with trophy items, but also have some functional things like food and coffee makers. You can potentially have lockers with loadouts pre-saved. Bam, you're ready to go. I think it will be much easier for Cloud Imperium to implement physical addresses to these habs in the future as they will have a huge amount of floors and basements in buildings to house players with elevators going to each of these floors they can go they can build up a huge amount in these sort of like skyscrapers but they can also build down a huge amount and they could have rental fees of these sort of habs controlling the amount of players that are here somewhat you know, there's obviously going to be a certain amount if they do physicalized addressing for for habs they have to go well there's only a certain amount available also they are expanding out a lot of cities in the game and there's a huge amount of space on a planet so you could probably house all the players that will ever be in game on arc corp for example but when you have uh, a couple of dozen star systems all with a huge amount of planets and cities and that sort of jazz well there's a a lot of places that players can then set up. Again, Clown Imperium could just go, we'll save the interior of these habs and the customizations that players have made and just move them to like matchmaking wise around uh, the floors of the sort of mega hab, the sort of um, skyscraper. That is a solution that we know works because Cloud Imperium have done that previously. But Cloud Imperium have said eventually they do want addressed habs. They do want people to say, I live in 3216B in the Bumblebee Center on Orison. Another thing to remember as well is they are expanding out these cities a lot in game. We're going to see uh, some of the expansions they've got sort of planned for Lawville, for example, at CitizenCon. It's worth mentioning that it's sort of like physicalized, truly addressed physicalized habs and hangers are a step beyond just custom ones and persistent ones. And you can sort of expect a pipeline and evolution of that being sort of more customization of the interior of a hab and hanger then costs associated for rental different types of hab and hangers at cities to rent and then the sort of permanent physical addresses associated with them if it's possible and it makes sense because they might go well actually we don't need to have physically addressed hangers and habs that doesn't make sense or that sort of breaks the game it's impossible to do something that clan imperium have also previously talked about is homesteads so these are going to be somewhere that we can live and customize and there were sort of 
lightly associated at least with the new colonialism outposts that are coming to Pyro. So these are sort of areas that, uh, little settlements that Cloud Imperium have been building out and expect that little settlements and towns in game are going to be able to house players somewhat. So you're going to be able to uh, basically spawn in them like you would a city and um, you'll be able to customize a hab there. That's what it sounds like uh, and that makes sense as well. They might um, have different costs associated with them than living in a city as well, but it's all the same tech and it makes sense. Will space stations have rentable habs and more variety of habs than just a tiny room? Probably, but Cloud Imperium haven't really discussed that previously. It does make sense though. Some players are going to want to live in space stations or Grimhex, right? So why not let them buy habs there? They're, they're just landing zones. Um, now, it might be that the smaller space stations or the ones that like range points, the sort of rest stops and that sort of stuff, they just maybe only have rentable habs, um, only temporary ones. It is going to be dependent on uh, particular sort of landing zones and stations and that sort of stuff. Uh, a bit of a magnitude beyond all of this are player bases. Cloud Imperium have been building out and using the raster tool that they um, use to sort of place outposts and structures in game. Um, this is what they're using for the colonial outposts. This is what they're using to sort of build a lot of the in-game content. But eventually, this is going to be the foundation for a player-facing tool to build bases in-game. Obviously, they'll really need to sort of jazz up the UI and make it gamified, but you are going to be able to build bases with or without a Pioneer. That Pioneer is a giant sort of um, floating fabricator factory thing that allows you to build more and more quickly and more efficiently but it was originally going to be the only way to build bases, I believe. You sort of like dropped outpost buildings, but they've expanded out this base gameplay and what you can do with it quite a lot. At least that's what it sounds like. And because we don't know until it's actually in our hands, really. Uh, in UEE territory, you're going to be able to purchase a land claim. You're going to need to purchase a land claim to build in that area. You go, bam, got a land claim. I'm going to place it on this planet or moon. No one else is um, in this area and then I can uh, gonna be able to exploit the resources there or build a base there. Now, areas like Pyro or that are outside of UEE jurisdiction, you're gonna be able to build anywhere that's effectively flat enough to build, but you're not gonna have the protection of the system's security and uh, or, or the law or anything like that there. So people could just come along and take your stuff unless you have otherwise defended it. So what exactly will we be able to build at bases? Well, we don't 100% know yet. It's likely going to be a mixture of storage, resource extraction, refining, crafting, defense, repair, refuel, logistic, and living area. So Clan and Pyramid have talked about some of this before, but we don't know exactly how this is all going to work together. And a lot of it was during concept, which may have changed significantly, will have changed significantly. My expectation is that you'll be able to make ammo and fuel, etc. at bases, and then use them as staging platforms in systems like Pyro. Orgs will sort of fight each other over resources in an area, but to really push an Org out of a system, you're going to need to locate their bases and capture and destroy them so that they can't resupply and then are forced to go to another system to get what they need. Cloud Imperium have already talked about the importance of base location as you'll be able to exploit nearby resources, so surveying will be a major part of exploration and base building gameplay. This does also imply that at least some bases might be temporary and used while you numb up resources in an area and then decommissioned and then sort of moved off. That's what the Pioneer was originally going to do. It would plop down outposts. Um, you might use that for a permanent base or a temporary one, and then you could pick them up, crunch them all back up together or just move them. So resource-wise, this could be materials underground, liquids, etc. that you might be exploiting, but you might also be building farms, for example, or making a moisture farm so you can harvest water. Farming-wise, we've seen, obviously, that the Endeavor's going to have biodomes. I would expect to have that on planets. Um, so sometimes you might want to build a biodome. Sometimes it's going to be a farm exposed to the elements. They've previously talked about um, changing the topsoil of a planet as well for farming. You can expect, though, bases to be very important and very diverse in Star Citizen. Cloud Imperium are investing a lot of time and development resources into making base building a major part of the game. We also know that bases and structures will make use of the resource management system. So hopefully this is coming out next year. But basically, these structures will require power and that will power the lights, machinery, components, life support, etc. You may need to um, maintain some of this stuff and repair components, move components around. Structures and outposts basically operate in the same way as ships. Um, so they have all these components on board and all that sort of jazz. So breaking into bases and turning off the fences is something I can foresee. But also, you'll need to think about panel generation and um, things like food and water, building wind and solar panels. You'll be able to build defenses around bases. I'm expecting you'll be able to hire NPCs as well. But to what extent and how useful these are going to be when you're offline, that is a very different thing. 
How do these things persist across multiple shards then? Well, that's the question. If I've got a base on a planet and um, I'm in one shard, does that mean it can get attacked on multiple shards simultaneously? It could get on a, attacked on a shard that I'm not at. Uh, what if I edit it or expand it? How does that sort of change the way it looks? Does it then appear or change on the other shard immediately? What if two players try and build on the same area at the same time on two different shards? Does my base appear there if I'm offline? There are certainly a lot of questions with how this all works with um, sort of server meshing and edge cases. Clan Imperium have talked about it previously, saying that maybe bases exist on all servers but are only interactable and enterable in one of them at a time. They're only sort of active on one at a time and they're sort of invincible on the others. That does seem odd to me though because does that mean you can only attack them in special circumstances when a player's online or only on one of the shards? And how do you make sure that you're on that shard? It, we don't know how this is all going to work and be handled. But I suspect that Cloud Imperium also don't know yet um, until they have dedicated teams working on this and actually implementing it and evolving it. And the first implementation certainly won't be the last implementation. How will bases be handled when players are offline? Um, can they be destroyed? Can they be captured? That's all stuff that Cloud Imperium need to work out. How effective are base defenses going to be? Obviously, HABs, hangars, and bases are all incredibly important to the game, and a lot is yet to be determined for exactly how the persistence and gameplay will pan out but it will evolve from when they first put it in the game. It's not final, player feedback, advancing tech, and what makes sense will drive the development for those features forward. I personally think bases are maybe a couple of years away, but persistent hangers and habs are a lot closer than that. I'm interested to know what you think though. Are you excited for the prospect of customizable hangers and haps? And do you think that they will focus on that um, to quite a large extent after 4.0's release? Because it makes sense. They get persistent entity streaming in 3.18. They get server meshing in 4.0. Well, actually that allows for those persistent hangers and customizable hangers and haps uh, in a much better way. What sort of base building opportunities do you think there's going to be? Um, are you interested in surveying for base locations? Because obviously surveying for a location working out where resources are under the ground or nearby is going to be incredibly important for exploration gameplay and making money from selling those locations off to uh, people that want to build bases or even just exploit the resources there. It doesn't necessarily always have to be base building. Obviously, people are going to be uh, taking miners to these locations, sort of um, taking these prospectors and moles and that sort of stuff. Do you expect to see uh, the ability to build space stations eventually? I mean, it's certainly something I think Clan Imperium will support at some point. I'm not sure if that's going to be well after release, though. Do you think defences will actually be able to protect a base um, properly while the owners are offline? Or do you think once a base has been found, it's only a matter of time before it's destroyed or taken over? What do you want to see with base building? What kind of gameplay? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love for you to join in the conversation in the comments below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think I've missed out. Tell me how you think it's going to differ from my points of view there. Whatever your thoughts though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Nordcon 2952, the road to Nord 4.0. What do you want out of NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer? Nord base building? Nord hunting 2.0? A dynamic Nordonomy? I'm personally looking forward to the latest Nord Cruiser. In the meantime, I'm going to make do with NordVPN protecting my data from insidious space pirates and giving me unrivaled access to all the content that the internet has to offer. Use the links below. Note Nordcon 2952 does not actually exist. Also adding to my shell pile, Toby Eye Tracker 5 gives you precise head tracking and control with your eyes. That's the sound of my eyes controlling the lasers, giving you unprecedented immersion in Star Citizen. You can basically aim lasers with your eyes. Pew pew! Use the links below and code BoardGamer for discount. Every month we have a ship giveaway for Star Citizen. For October, we're giving away a Cutlass Black with pirate skin, lifetime insurance, and Star Citizen game package. All you need to jump into the game. Just comment on any of my videos made during October to be in for a chance of winning that. If you would like to further support the channel, please consider becoming a channel member with the join button below my videos or potentially becoming a Patreon. You'll get access to some exclusive content and it really helps the channel out. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video and have a great October.